So he literally wrote the book on growing healthy trees in Australia. <laughs> in recent years, Ross's focus has shifted from tree quality to a more holistic approach to ensuring the success of our new urban trees with a concept he calls the urban tree puzzle. And that's what he'll be talking about today. So would you all welcome Ross. Um, well, thank you to Penrith Council, City Green, and um, WS Rock for, my, for being here, uh, for putting it on, and for asking me to be here, which was great. Thank you. Um, I'm not actually going to talk about the urban tree puzzle today so much. I'm talking about, I'm talking about what I call human-centric urban trees, and by that I mean those, those trees which interact directly with we humans. I'm not talking about our revegetation zones or our... Um, or those smaller trees and so on, which might go into about broad-scale plantings, but our trees in our streets, our parks, our car parks and so on. I won't bore you with that. We all know all the wonderful things that trees do for us, and we generally don't have enough. And not only do we not have enough, we're losing what we've got. So, of course, we need more trees. But we don't need more trees. We need more successful trees. Because all the amazing benefits that our urban trees can provide are only realised when those trees actually succeed when they grow, to be, grow, they grow to be big enough and grow for long enough to do the job that they're intended for. OK. We've come a long way. If I go back sort of 30 years, urban trees really weren't given any importance or significance at all. So we have come a long way. And in recent decades, our urban trees are now seen as important throughout our society, and they're even now important politically, which is a really good thing. However, our current approach to urban trees focuses very firmly on the inputs, particularly on how many trees have we planted. What we need to do is we need to change that and start to focus, rather on counting the number of trees we've planted, start to look at what have we actually achieved. We need to achieve the best possible outcome and the greatest return on investment. Okay. Because when we, when, we, when we just simply count the number of trees that we've planted, um, the, the assumption is, of course, that every tree you plant's a good thing. But that's actually not necessarily the case. Okay. Because when we strive to meet these, these planting targets, and typically within a very constricted time frame, there is the temptation to try and get things in the ground, make things happen. And we, all, and we wind up making terrible mistakes in the process. And we waste money, we waste opportunity, and we waste time. We need to ensure, for instance, we need to ensure that each and every tree, now Elk is going to talk more about this, it's got to, it needs soil to grow in and it needs space to grow in every single time. Okay. We can have planting situations like this where we've actually got some space, we've got some room, we've got some soil, and it's all good. We need to make sure we allow for not just the tree to grow, but we need to allow for that tree to expand. The trunk diameter is going to increase, the butt flare is going to increase, the primary roots are going to increase. You're going to get these lateral and vertical forces exerted on the surrounds, and we need to make sure we're provided for that. And then we get plantings like this one. Okay? Um, Gulen had a similar picture in, in, in his presentation. We see plantings like this, bed between two curbs or between a curb and a footpath, where there is simply no room, no soil, and there, is, there really is no point. Now, I took this photo probably five or six years ago, and I went back and revisited it a couple of weeks ago. And some of the trees actually now look like this. They've actually grown, sort of. They're pretty stressed. It is actually shading the bonnet of one car. Um, but it's not really what we'd like. But the trees that look like that are on their way to looking like that. And the ones that look like that are on their way to looking like that. So we have this planting. So we have a planting like this, which really was a total and utter waste of time. It was never going to succeed. Okay? So if we're looking to actually achieve planting targets, you can't count trees like this, because trees like this simply don't count. What about this sort of planting? A typical in-pavement planting. Here we have a development. The paving was, went, was, was put down. There were small gaps left in the paving for those trees to go in. A hole was dug. Tree goes in. A bit of a media, a bit of media. It was very poor stock, I have to add. Totally inappropriate for the planting situation. Okay? And here we have a completed planting program. Okay? Like that was three years ago. A couple of weeks ago, 
surprise, surprise, we've got those trees breaking up because of very poor stock quality. But the real problem is this. Okay? After only three years, we've already got pavement heave and trip hazards forming. Okay? Because the only place in that, in that planting scenario that those roots can grow is in a little bit of soil around the... Whoops, my point is falling apart. Um, a little bit of soil around the base of the tree and in the sand layer immediately under the pavers. So, plantings like this are normally inherited by council. They'll be put in by the developer at the time. Council will actually take those trees over. Now, when council approves a planting like this, what that council is actually saying is, OK, we agree to accept responsibility for the trip hazards and the problems and the broken branches, and we agree to pay for the remedial works that are going to be needed later on. Now, had council insisted that decent soil reserves be, made, be provided at the time of planting, and provision of zone for the zone of upheaval was made at the time of planting, and there was a reasonable stock, standard of stock placed in that, then council would have inherited an asset. Whereas here, they're actually inheriting a very ex expensive liability. Stock quality. We need to make sure that second-rate trees are not accepted when we're trying to meet planting deadlines. You have a program, you've got a very finite time, time frame to do it. As Darren will attest, the trees you want are not, are not necessarily available at the time. Trees take time to grow. We as growers cannot magically snap our fingers and produce them. Okay, so when you have these timelines, there is the temptation to complete the project by grabbing what you can. And that's just a recipe for disaster. And the reason for that is all tree growth is by extension and not elongation. Now what that means is trees simply grow by adding new bits onto whatever is there. So the tree you plant, whatever the size it is at the time of planting, is the foundation of the tree and the landscape. And if that foundation is compromised, then the tree and the landscape is compromised forever. Okay, we want to make sure that stock that goes in goes into this sort of standard and has, doesn't have some basic structural flaw which is going to cause that tree to fail like that. Okay. We need to make sure for each and every tree we plant that the planting, the, the, the planting and establishment processes are up to the task because, because if they're not, we're going to wind up with failures, losses, and a very, very disappointing outcome. As an example, we need to make sure that our maintenance, our watering during that establishment period, suits the particular project. We need to know how much water you need to apply, we need to know how often you need to apply it, how long you need to apply it for, where that water needs to go, and so on. And we need to make sure that that, that irrigation program fits that particular application. And a simple one-size-fits-all maintenance program is only going to work in some cases. So we need to be a lot smarter and a lot more serious about how we look after our newly planted trees. In fact, our newly planted trees only succeed when a whole host of things come together. It's been touched on by a couple of speakers already. OK, this is a, a team effort. This is an industry effort. It is not our urban trees don't succeed when any one of us get our jobs, do our jobs properly. It's when a whole number of us do our jobs properly and we work together. Um, if you think of, it, of a successful urban tree as a kid's jigsaw puzzle with a few pieces, and think of the tree succeeding when that puzzle is complete. I like the puzzle analogy because it shows the interconnectedness between the various pieces. You might, lose, you might use this analogy, which, I, which is, I've used in the past and so have many others, whereby the successful, the successful tree hangs on those pieces of, the, of that urban tree puzzle, but if you think of them as links in a chain. Now, this is, this is very good in, in, in demonstrating that if you don't get all the pieces in place, the planting will fail. It also serves to illustrate that the success of the tree planting is going to be determined by the link in the chain that you do to the lowest standard. Whatever you do to the lowest standard is going to determine the outcome. Okay. We need to understand, rather than chasing targets, that very often, Gwilym spoke a moment ago, very often less is more. And you can get a much better outcome if you don't plant as many trees, but you do a better job with the ones you do plant. Okay, only plant what you can look after. I spoke to a council recently and they had a tree plant, an annual tree planting program trying to get 3,000 trees in the ground. And their maintenance, their maintenance team consisted of one person. There is no way, now, this guy was great, he was fantastic, but there's no way known he had the resources to look after his trees. If you don't look after your newly planted trees properly, they may fail, okay? They may 
so they may survive but be set back. If they're set back, then you're losing growth periods. They may be um, then attacked by pests and diseases because they're now under stress, or they may simply have their form destroyed by that stress during that establishment phase. Anyway, the outcomes, if the trees are not looked after, looked after well during that establishment phase, the outcomes will never be what you'd hope to be. Okay, so if you've only got the staff and resources to look after 1,000 trees, don't plant 1,500. Because if you plant 1,500, then you've got 1,500 stressed and vulnerable trees. But if you only plant 1,000, not only can you actually now look after the 1,000 trees, you were going to plant 1,500. So you've actually got more resources to put into the trees you do plant. So the chance of getting 1,000 successful trees is very, very good. And 1,000 successful trees is a far better outcome than 1,500 failing ones. Okay. Don't push for the maximum number of trees when you've got limited space. This, is, this has come up as well already. Imagine if you've got a, a, a new subdivision where space is at an absolute premium and there's very, very limited room between the curbs and the footpaths on both sides of the road. If you're going to match the trees to those spaces, you're only going to be able to plant, to plant small trees. But rather than doing that, stop and think a bit and say, listen, what about if, instead of having a little bit of room on both sides of the road, I have no room on one side at all and a reasonable space on the other side. If you only plant half as many medium-sized trees on one side of the road, then you're going to get twice the amount of shade and four times the amount of environmental benefits that you would have, had, that you would have got by planting twice as many smaller growing species. And you might wind up with something that looks a bit like that. Okay, this is my favourite. This is my very favourite. You come to the end of the project. Something's happened, the, place has had, the project has had, has had to be redesigned, the design budget has run over. You've run, into some, you've run into some issues on site, the civil costs have run over. You get to the trees, which is what the whole program was really all about, and you run out of money. Okay, so what are you going to do? The knee-jerk reaction, of course, is I'm going to save some money and I'm going to plant smaller trees. I really want my trees in the ground. I really need to, to deliver this program. Um, and I'm going to save some money by planting some smaller trees. There is no magic size which says you have to plant trees of any given size. Okay? There, there will be an appropriate size or range of sizes for any given project. But if you plant trees that are smaller than whatever that appropriate size might be, the first thing you've done is you've compromised the short-term outcome. It's not going to look anything like as good as it would have done had you put trees in which are an appropriate size for that particular project. You've also jeopardised the long-term outcome because now you put these trees in the ground, they're going to need years of formative pruning. They're going to need protection. They're going to need replacement because you have vandalism. And if that work is not done, then the project will never actually succeed. And if that work is not done well, then that project won't succeed. So you've now got this question mark over, this, over the success of the program because you put smaller trees in. And finally, even if everything works well, instead of getting a result in a couple of years, it might be five years. So you've delayed the outcome. And because you've got these additional on costs by planting these smaller trees, okay, then a lot of those savings, those savings that you thought you might have made, are going to be eroded by those on costs anyway. Okay. But here's the rub. The tree's the cheapest part of the whole program. Okay? The civil costs, the design costs, even the design costs get more, you can you consultants costs, all those other costs are going to add up. The tree is almost invariably the cheapest bit. So if your trees are 10% of the total budget for that particular program, and you slash the size of the trees by 50% and the price of the trees by 50%, the most you can possibly save is 5%. So you've got all those negative things impacting on that program for possibly a 5% saving. If the trees are only 5%, then the most you can possibly save is 2.5%. So you've got all these negative outcomes for what's a very small saving. And that very small saving is then going to be eroded by those on costs anyway. You might think that, you know, sort of claiming that the tree is only 5 or 10% of the, the, um, the total tree cost is a bit of an exaggeration. This is Layman Street in Newcastle, where the hills figs went back in. In this particular planting program here, um, the cost of the trees was something less than 1% of the cost of the program. Okay? The cost of the tree is a very small part of your total cost. And yet it's what the whole thing is about, and it's what people are going to see. 
Okay. If you run out of money, don't slash the size of the trees, leave a few out. Because for every tree you leave out, you save the total cost of the tree, the total cost of the civil works, the total cost of the planning establishment, and so on and so on. And those savings don't get eroded, they're real and they're permanent. Okay? And in addition to that, if you get some more money next year or the year after, you can come back and you can infill those spaces without having jeopardised what you did in the first place. Okay. And it is far better to plant, say, 85 or 90 trees that look like that into an urban landscape than 100 trees that look like that. And that's about the difference it's going to be in terms of your total costs. Striving to achieve planting targets has been extremely useful. It has helped us raise the importance and the significance of urban trees. It's been a very useful thing politically because we work in these politically short terms. We have an expectation as a society. We want instant. Ticking the box to say you've planted a certain number of trees is a very quick way of saying I've done a great thing. Alrighty? It is a very poor measure of success. Okay? Because Planting the greatest number of trees possible and getting the very best possible outcome are generally not the same thing. So what we need to do as an industry is we need to take a bit of a step back and change what we actually focus on. We need to switch the current emphasis on planting targets and number of trees planted and let that evolve into an emphasis which actually focuses on success the greatest success, the best possible outcome, and the best possible return on investment. There was a comment raised here, and I think Philip raised it, about the difference between planting bigger trees versus smaller trees. Okay? There is no ideal, there is no size that says you have to plant a particular size of tree. Different sizes of trees will be appropriate for different sorts of projects. Okay? If you're doing a riparian zone, you're going to want uh, tube stock, very small trees, lots and lots of them, plant them on the ground, stand back and let that, let that landscape evolve with minimum human in, um, inter intervention. If you're going to a major streetscape, then the opposite, the opposite happens. You want to take total control over those trees. You're going to make sure you you're going to need clean stem heights, you're going to need vehicle access, pedestrian access, sight lines, all those sorts of things you're going to need. So you need to actually control the form, the structure of those trees. You need to take total control. And planting bigger trees, the bigger the tree you plant, the more control you exert over that outcome before the tree is planted. Okay? The smaller the tree you plant, the more of that control needs to be activated, acted on after the tree is planted. Now, if you're a council that has an incredibly good crew, well-resourced, well-skilled, and they can maintain those trees for the next three or four or five years well, then you can probably lean towards the smaller trees because you have the resources to actually do that job well. If you don't have the, those resources, or you, don't, or you can't guarantee that it, that work is going to be done well, then you're better off to shift towards planting bigger trees. Okay, that was a bit. Okay, thank you.